Hey guys, what's going on? It's Julia Lee with Poker News. We're here with Parker Tonka, Talbot, and Peter Skog, both poker players, uh, playing at the WSOP main event. Uh, just wanted to say hi to you guys and see what's going on. Love this angle. It really brings my double chin out. <laughs> okay, I'll try and fix it. No, How's that? it's fine. We're just gonna have to sit really low. Like it's fine. Like it's kind of awkward for three people, but we got this. We'll be fine. Okay. So what's going on? We have three viewers joining. I hope more viewers are coming in. Three, oh, oh wow, ten. ten. There you go. See, the oh Poker News channel God. does have pull after yes. all. Yes. Yes. These are real viewers. Um, so yeah, thank you for taking time off your dinner break to talk with us. No worries, it's a ridiculously long dinner break anyways. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, you have, like, that buffet is insane. Surely it so. takes like 25 <laughs> minutes to eat and then yeah. you just have an hour to walk around and do nothing. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Feel free to comment. Um, but, yeah, so uh, can you guys explain, how, how do you guys know each other? Well, so, let's get into that. Peter is actually the winner of our home game. I don't know if uh, the people who follow Poker News know or anything, but uh, on my channel uh, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Pete with four A's, uh, we ran a home game series where the overall winner at the end of it, there was a little process to get into the final, but the overall winner would win a WSOP E Rosvadov main event package. And the winner yeah. is Peter. No wow. Problem. And he's no problem. fucking crushing the main event. Yeah, it's been well so far. How much you got? Just under 300k. Just wow. under 300k. Over double, over double my stack. Yeah. <laughs> Not to rub it in or anything, but um, yeah, so how has it been for you? Like, how does it feel being here? Well, you know when amateurs like me make a deep run and they say it's an amazing experience and everything? Yeah. Well, the first time I wasn't at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous and I made mistakes and I lose half my stack and I was like, Shh, I'm gonna be out in like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> but then I won uh, my first big one and uh, the nerves got the nerves under control and started playing my game and uh, it went my way, I built my stack and uh, now I feel more comfortable and now it's really fun out there. Wow. Love it. How many people are even left? Like 230, I think. 230 and an only 80 cash, so it'll cash like tomorrow. We won't be cashing today, but hopefully we both make it yeah. to yeah. the cash at least. I think you guys will. Um, I want to check and see if anyone's commenting. Oh yeah, we should definitely have the comments open. How do I bring that up? Hmm, good question. <laughs> um, oh, uh -oh. that's what we want. Okay. Um, yeah, we should probably find out how to do that. Maybe comments? put it like this. Anyone? No. That doesn't work. Um, hmm. uh, is it because you're on like this? Let me see. Hi, friends. Hmm. I don't know. Usually the comments just, just come up. Why don't I comment on it and see Yeah, what go happens. for it. Try. Try that. Oh, yeah. So we'll just come up right here, actually. If you guys have any comments or questions, there like, please ask type away let us know what's going on oh we just don't have friends though they just didn't want to ask yeah, us you guys anything. are just watching us you're just like we're like fish in an aquarium but we want I to hear what you guys want to know and what you guys want to ask you want to yeah. oh so we do have oh, comments okay. boom okay. roey's got you. it love you tonka hey love you too hey handsome it says tonka in brackets but i think he really meant you peter <laughs> Probably. flex emoji um okay so, cool. how's it going how's it going friends so um yeah. <laughs> You're hoping for questions, huh? <laughs> How about you, Julia? Julia, where where are you from? I'm from outside Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So American America. girl. Yep. Yep. Living, living in Rosvedov for the next ten days. So. Oh, I thought you were like actually gonna say you're living in Rosvedov, no. and I was gonna say, excuse no, me. Just like here for the ten You're days. joining one of the 700 people that live here. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so the comments say. Max Odom's only here for the chick in the middle. <laughs> Hope you ship it, man. How great was it to get Phil Hellmuth steaming and have him walking around? It was good. It was, uh, Did you it was, uh, it? yeah, yeah. Stop. In, uh, well, I played in the 50k heads up double okay. shootout at Poker Night in America, uh, just maybe a month ago, a month, uh, month and a half ago. And yeah, drew Phil Helmuth in the first round, just four of us, but, but beat him in three matches. It was really good. Yeah. And at one point, I called an overbet on the turn with a pair and a flush draw, and he had trips, and I rivered the flush, and he went all in. And I called, and then he proceeded to get up and walk around, <laughs> steaming, going on about how he's the best in the world, and the how, uh, yeah, the huge, the huge. But it was amazing, right? Because, like, 
I mean, my dad read Phil Helmy's top 10 book when we first started playing poker. I'm like, that's kind of like how we learned poker a little bit. Like, he read that, and, and then he was like, and then, we, and then I played him heads up, and it was always like the dream. You know, you get Helmy standing up, walking around, steamed up. That's it was perfection. Insane. It was perfection. Did he tweet about it? Uh, he tweeted about the match after after he lost. He said how depressed he was that he lost and whatnot. Oh, but at so, least he didn't like vouch for like you know. He, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't hate me. I was I was kind of curious going into it, like if he was gonna be like super rude or condescending to me, you know, because I'm just like one of the young in, internet kids, you know. But yeah. he wasn't at all. He was actually really cool and pretty pretty nice in person. Awesome. Okay, um, let's see what else people want to say. Found a boss, best solid of piece of advice for MTT early levels? Um, either don't play them. You can light reg. Uh, you gotta get a little bit lower, Tonka. Oh, sorry. Can't sorry, see your face. sorry, friends. Okay, let's get in frame. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, either you don't have to play them or you can play them and then just, you know, play relatively tight. That's generally it. If there's no annies, if you have heaps of chips, you generally just have to play a little bit tighter. Tons of big blinds, at least in the early levels. Did Tonka give you any advice before going into the main event? Yeah, he gave me some advice. You know, yeah. I never played a big live tourney before. Okay. So he gave me some pointers, uh, which helped me a bit, I must say. Boom, yeah, I mean, so, it so can't really fun. help that much. It's kind of one of the things that, like, you know, you can go into it with as much, like, information as someone tells you as you want, and it doesn't really matter. It's something you have to do a bunch of times to yeah. really be, like, super confident and comfortable yeah, in, like, what yeah. you're doing, you know? That's what I noticed. It took, like, two or three levels before you got you yeah, know, settled yeah. in, and, you know, it sort of be, like, playing in front of the I computer. mean, honestly, it's taken me years, like, of playing, like, live poker and stuff. Like, I used to, like, hate live poker when I used to just, like, play online and stuff. Like, I used to, like, yeah. really, really hate it, and I used to always be like, ah, oh, I fucking hate playing live poker and all this shit. You know? It's super slow, one tabling, it's not fun, you know? All, the, all these guys, they think they know what they're doing but they don't anyways yeah that used to be my opinion and now I'm like enjoy it much more and I play significantly different than I used to and I think that online is a decent amount different than live I think you have to make some adjustments and play a decent amount different live than you do online so with tournaments how much do you guys think um, as far as winning percentage of it is experience luck and how good you are I think uh, the luck factor is highly underrated okay I think uh, yeah I mean I'll never forget the comment from Phil Locke, okay. which was, he kind of used tournaments as uh, plus EV crapshoots. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, you're probably a profitable player in most of them, but it's just like a luck box shit show basically, which yeah. is, you know, very true. I mean, this is what I always say about guys like Fedor and like all these guys that win all these big tournaments, you know, like Bryn Candy in the last like year and a half. It's like, yeah, they're fucking amazing. They're like one of the best players in the world. But like, it doesn't matter how good you are. You have to run so unbelievably good to be in that situation, even if you're by far and away the best player in the world, you know? So what are your thoughts on someone like Phil, who has been doing it for like years now? Like literally longer than how, I, how old I am, pretty much. <laughs> like, well, I mean, Phil plays like so many tournaments and like... I mean, he has, like, a big tournament win a year, which is, like, not really that unreasonable, but it's not like he's, like, crushing insanely hard or anything, you know? Yeah. Like, his, like, final tables and deep runs, a lot of them come from, you know, some smaller field events in the summer. Like, like guys like him that play, like, literally every tournament, not every tournament, but, like, so many tournaments in the summer and, like, lots of them mixed games and small fields and stuff, like, obviously you're going to make deeper runs, right? Right. In, like, a 200-person field compared to playing exclusively, like, 5,000-player fields kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... Helmuth is Helmuth, you know? People have been talking about how bad Helmuth is for years, and I think it's a mix, you know? I think Helmuth does some things, like, incredibly correct, and, like, he's very unfundamentally sound in a lot of other ways. Yeah. What about you? About Helmuth? Uh, I mean, wait, how much how much do you think of, like, tournament winnings is, like, percent luck, skill, and experience? Well, that's the thing that I learned when I started watching Tonka, uh, because he learned... I like the way he says your name. Yeah, yeah the, Swede, the Swedish way of saying, <laughs> of saying my name, Tonka. Yeah, because watching him, you know, I got more understanding about the, the strategics and the mathematics, and you have to put in a lot of volume to run that good and do those results. Yeah. And that was one thing that I learned that really improved my game a lot, that's... You know, you have to play um, play the percentages and just hope for the best. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It, it's it's honestly crazy, like, how many, like, players are just, like, unbelievably really good. And, yeah. like, you probably won't ever see them or you'll see them, like, once or twice just because they're not lucky in the big spots, you know? Right. Like, no matter how good you are in tournaments is what I'm trying to get across is, like, if you make it to... Uh, you know, like the final 18, you're almost always going to get in a spot where you have to win a flip. Right. You know, you have to win like some big flip or even you have to hold like a 70-30. Yeah. I mean, three out of 10 times you lose this. Yeah. You know, it's very easy to lose this the three out of 10 times, like eight times in a row and just never have that fortunate outcome. Yeah. 
There's a lot of people that play, um, you know, they don't really like playing the tournaments because it's such like a, there's so many Crap highs shoot. and lows. Yeah, like they would rather play <coughs> cash games. So like, I mean, what what's your opinion on that? Would you I rather mean, be like a I cash always, game I always tell or? people that I like tournaments because it's, there's a climax. Yeah. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. And there's an end where someone wins a lot of money. Yeah. You know, to me, cash games are, are fun in certain settings, but like for the most part, they're boring because it's like the same thing over and over and over and over again. And like at least in tournaments, you know, you have like this Action. huge climax at the end, you know? Everybody gets like super into it. You know, winning a big pot deep, like there's no better feeling than having like a huge amount of chips or scooping like a massive pot deep yeah. in a tournament, you know? And just stacking up mountains and mountains of chips. What does it feel like to have um, a rail behind you? Is that different? Because I'm sure in cash games you don't really have that. Yeah, I mean, at, like a, I, I like the highest. Really yeah, <laughs> yeah. At the highest stakes cash games, obviously, like people do rail it and sweat it and stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's fun, right? That's like the whole point of like the whole streaming connection and community that you build. You know, you build like a team behind you kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's really fun. Yeah. It's significantly different than like five years ago when I was just, you know, my like 20 year old self just yeah. click, clicking some buttons <laughs> for fun. Uh, let's see. Do you guys, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Um, Max says Phil Ivey is the only greatest of all time. Um, what do you think? Peter for president in here as well. Yeah, Peter oh, for yeah. president. Uh, yeah. He's vice president, me or Tonka. I guess I'll be treasurer. That's fine with yeah. me. <laughs> I don't know about the the Phil and uh, Phil versus Phil debut, but yeah. I wanna dig in on the tournament stuff. Like uh, when the boom came and poker was you know enormous and everything, you just played a lot of cash game to like make a couple of bucks and stuff. But nowadays I just play for for the thrill of it, you know, and you get lots more thrills to play in tournaments. Oh play yeah, exactly. Games. That's yeah. why that's why like the whole entire you know I feel like poker world is kind of just progressing towards tournaments. You know, like yeah. the, it's not really viable to like try to make a lot of money in other in other fields at this point it's too hard you know but tournaments are still like everybody loves to play tournaments because yeah. like I said it's, it's exciting yeah. you can pay 10,000 euros and win 1.1 million in this tournament someone's going to do that yeah. someone's yeah. literally going to win 1.1 million from 10,000 you know so it's like it's exciting yeah. if you sit down at a cash game with 10,000 euros you know you have an unbelievably amazing night maybe you make 50,000 yeah. you know and that's like the best possible case scenario you know right. so it's like that's that's the difference in and my opinion I think opinion. the tournament poker has more uh, different spots for sure. Cash games, you know, different types of uh, different type of spots that you get and decisions you have to make. Right. Uh, and more pressure on those decisions. Uh, so I think that's a lot more fun. Yeah. And the cash games are a bit hard to beat. I'm not good enough, so. Yeah. Better to luck. Agreed. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. When will Stud come back? Getting sick of Hold'em. Um, <laughs> probably never. Uh, and the same scale that it was, but I feel like mixed games are getting a lot more love recently and uh, people are starting to enjoy them more. So I, I can see like mixed games and stud just sort of coming back in, you know, a much more minor way than you're probably hoping for. Honest thoughts of Chris Ferguson, am I allowed to answer? I mean, it's up to you, yeah. <laughs> On the actual interview, I, I called him a scumbag a few times, <laughs> um, if you guys watched the, the other interview. Uh, I think uh, Chris Ferguson is, is, you know, not a very good human. He's, uh, in, in fact, a terrible human. And, uh, and yeah, it honestly kind of pained me to see all these people that I kind of like in that, in that Poker News video saying, like, you know, it's, uh, it's good for him, you know, congratulations to Chris. He's been around in poker for a long time. It's like, nah, fuck Chris, you know, he's an asshole. So he's a bad man, took a lot of people's money, fucked over a lot of people. But yeah, if it's not apparent my views on Chris Ferguson, uh, yeah. I feel, I feel like it should, it, should, it should be there now. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to ask? We'd love to know. What's your opinion about PLO Solver? PO Solver or PLO Solver? I don't really have opinions on either, uh, to be honest. I feel like this is the whole problem with like poker and stuff. It's just like, I mean, I am the problem, right? You know, putting out free <laughs> advice kind of thing, you know, making everybody uh, better and stuff. But I don't really have any opinions on solvers. You know, they're always going to be there. If you want to learn and get better, we use them. I've used solvers before in the past. Um, PO, though, I mean... PO is a super, super useful tool. It's pretty hard to use, um, but it's obviously very, very good. And if you have a chance to go over it with someone who's really in-depth and smart about it, you should definitely do that. What's your opinion on tanking on the shot clock? <clears throat> um, tanking on the shot clock? Like, when there's a shot clock involved, tanking 30 seconds every hand? I don't know if that's the question, but... I think that's what they mean. Um, like, if you can't make a decision within 30 seconds... That kind of sucks. Like, if there's a shot clock and you still manage to take the full-time amount every single hand. I understand, like, wanting to balance, right? Because a lot of players, 
<coughs> excuse me, a lot of players will wait like four or five seconds every single t hand in order to balance, right? So that yeah. when they're gonna play a pot and when they're not gonna play a pot, there's not a huge discrepancy and players can't get reads off of that. I think that's super reasonable. Yeah. I think if you take 20 to 25 seconds to even 30 seconds in these scenarios, I think that's super unreasonable and really rude and just terrible for the game and bad for everybody else. Yeah, it kind of ruins the flow. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a, a nice old German lad on my table on the first day, and he was he seemed like a really nice guy, but he took 30 seconds to a minute to like think about checking his big blind and like a limp pot or something, you know? It was just like, it was infuriating. Yeah. It's like when you take, you know, three minutes on a hand where you put one big blind in the pot, it, it sucks, you know? Well, what about the players that come and play the main event, but they're not pros? Like, they're recreational players. I understand, he, he was one of these players. and know. That's what I said, you know, and, and, and at some point, you know, I, I did say to him, I said, I, I don't mean to be rude, um, and, you know, if, if you have to take time, please take your time. But, you know, in very simple decisions and, and stuff like where you're just going to check your big blind or you're just going to check or, you know, you already know what you're going to do. If you could speed up a little bit, that'd be great. Because he was taking an unreasonable amount of time, like 30, 40, 50 seconds on literally every decision. Yeah. And it's just, it's honestly just brutal. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't really Tilting. know. Yeah, it's frustrating and it's bad for everyone, you know. It, nobody has, enjoys this. Yeah. You know, this is this is the general thing that like the everybody's been talking about, and this is why everybody wants shot clocks and high rollers because generally it's the high roller players that take the longest time, right? Because they're thinking through everything on like well, the infinite infinite levels. Stake, yeah, you know? of course, but I don't know. I, I I like to play. I don't. I, and I don't play like stupidly fast or anything. I take my time in big decisions and stuff. Right. But I don't take forty five seconds on every decision. Do you think also maybe because you were playing online first, so that kind of makes you more of a faster player? Um, maybe, but that's like not really the case. Like all of these high rollers, like 95% of them are high rollers online, you know, that have either transitioned into live or still play both. Yeah. Um, and they're the worst tankers. Right. You know, like some of these high stakes German guys, like some of them just take so long. <laughs> I mean, Christoph Vogel saying, super nice guy and everything, but he still takes an obscene amount of time on every decision. Yeah. And a year ago, we were playing on a 25k high roller, like all day together and then on the final table, and he took like literally triple the amount of time wow. that he does now. <laughs> like it was, obs I think I called the clock on him like three or four times in one day. Oh God. Because if you take like three or four minutes in a decision, like I'll just call the clock whether I'm in the hand or not. Yeah, yeah. You should do that as well, Peter. Yeah. I actually had a guy who answered his phone in the middle of a hand. Really? <laughs> when you were playing a pot against yeah. him? No, I wasn't playing. I was spectating, but he was playing with a I mean, The one. dealer can make his hand dead if they uh, want. He told him, you can't talk on the phone during a Yeah. Game. But, like, if the dealer wanted to be a dick or whatever, he could literally just, like, fucking make his hand dead right away. That's weird. Shot clocks in all events. What are your thoughts on freeze-out for... High roller tournaments. Yeah. Ban rebuys, basically saying. Um, yeah, so that's like a little debate that I've seen on Twitter in the last few days. I think it's, I think one re-entry is pretty reasonable for lots of tournaments, uh, or for certain tournaments at least. But I feel like, uh, you know, these unlimited uh, re-entries. I actually saw Bill Perkins tweet out about that he's uh, going to uh, boycott high rollers until they uh, change it from unlimited re-entries. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting, and that's a pretty bold move and pretty legit play, you know? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm totally on board with it, you know? It sucks for, like, a recreational player mm -hmm. to, like, want to play a tournament, and, like, even if they want to re-enter and stuff, it sucks when, like, the absolute best player in the field gets to play six times if he wants to, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... That gives them an edge, pretty of much. Of course, it gives them a huge edge. It's just... It, it, it's unfortunate for, for anyone who's, you know, not spending all their time playing cards. Yeah. <laughs> I like the single re-entry. So if you like bust, uh, you know, a total suck out, you can re-enter again. And yeah, that's. Before. I think that's super that's reasonable. Fine. Yeah, I think I think a single re-entry in like a lot of tournaments is is, is pretty good. You know, because you know, uh, pros, re recreational players, everybody does. Not everybody, but lots of people don't mind re-entering. Yeah. You know, there's tons of people who, if they bust the bust the 10k recreationals, would just hop in again. There's another question from JJ Almeida. How many big blinds is it too much to shove king king or queen queen in a nine ring game? That is a very broad question. Um, <laughs> and I cannot answer because we need more details. Everything has variables. Who raised? How much do they have? How aggressive are they? What's the position? But generally, kings, you can get in whenever you want. Queens, different story. <laughs> I love how they all call you daddy. It's, yeah, it's kind of Where just, did that one come from? Just a <laughs> meme from that. the internet. <laughs> It's weird. I see. It's 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 weird. weird. Yeah. Calling a guy who sits at home and screams at bad beats for daddy. You know? Yeah. It's 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 strange. It's strange. I don't really know. I, I think 
I think at the beginning when I had less viewers, like a thousand or less or something, I would, we just somebody called me daddy, and I was like, yes, I am your father. You know? <laughs> and then I would be like, yes, welcome back, son, or something. Like I did like stupid shit like that for like a week or something, and then it just sort of stuck. And okay. You know, now grown men call me daddy. Okay, so Cody wants to know uh, what's your stack at currently. Uh, I have about 150,000 and uh, Peter has just under 300k. We're going to 1k, 2k, two levels left today. I mean, we both have lots of chips, you know. I had like 240 at one point, but I got moved to a much tougher table. I have Rainer Kempe on my left and another good English pro that I don't even know who he is, but he's playing really solid and I've been getting bad hands as well. I'm just chilling, you know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hang out. Yeah. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. Those <laughs> days are behind me. <laughs> They're back in my youthful you. days. Yeah, yeah. Tonka's daddy now so yeah i'm know, a father have, now yeah. no, 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 i have five thousands of children so uh, yes lots of responsibilities yeah many responsibilities i have i, I need to win this Switch tournament children. i have a uh, i have a lot of alimony to pay <laughs> okay um websites on finding backers selling action managing and personal bankroll uh, well, I'm actually going to do some videos on YouTube about uh, managing your bankroll and like what games you should play with what amount of money and what intentions you have. Uh, but as, as for staking groups, I mean, there's some decent staking groups like just in the poker Twitter, you know, 2 plus 2. I mean, if you just search around a little bit, you'll find, you know, maybe do some Googling. Tweet out to some people. 2 plus 2. We have become a full-time streamer again. Yes, yes, we will. I, I promise. I've been traveling a lot recently. I've been... uh You're doing YouTube. Yeah, well, well, not too much, but we're going to do more in the future, um, for sure. What, HUD? Uh, I use Poker Tracker 4. I use Poker Tracker 4 and HEM2 uh, for a long time. I, I like Poker Tracker 4 better. But yeah. Any other questions, guys? Anything you want to say? You've been so quiet. Yeah, I'm not the celebrity here. You know, it's Tanko with his 60,000 children who gets all the questions. Yeah, fuck. Do the whale dance. What is the whale dance? What does that mean? Uh, Frankie, what was your question? I'm not going to PCA. Blinds are 1k, 2k, you have 75k, early position, to play kings. You raise. That is a simple one. <sighs> How do you really feel Magnus. about Chris Ferguson? I already answered that one. Yeah. You guys can, uh, we're going to post the stream after, so uh, you can check it, out, check it out. It was more in the beginning of the uh, live stream. I didn't even get affected by Full Tilt going uh, under. I didn't have any money on there. So what's, yeah, well, I mean, like, why? Why the hatred? Because yeah, I had lots of friends that had wasn't right. hundreds of thousands. What do you mean it wasn't right? He literally stole millions of dollars. Yeah. Like, that's like an undisputable fact. He stole, like, they stole hundreds of millions of dollars um, from players that had trusted them with their money. Yeah. You know, I have lots of friends that had hundreds of thousands of dollars on the site that just, you know, had it locked up for years. I have some friends that, like, sold their money because mm -hmm. they had no money. Right. You know, I had a friend that had, like, $300,000 on there, and he ended up selling it at, like, like 30 cents on the dollar or something like that because he literally had no money. He had to, like, get some get some money to, to live somehow, you yeah. know? It's just, like, that's, that's, what, that's what he did. That's what he did. And then he has the audacity just to come and just play poker tournaments again like nothing ever happened and somehow people praise him for this Phil Helmy praises him for this and like I said you know like or I didn't say it but that's what Phil Helmy said he doesn't know the inside scoop and everything like that but like regardless of Ferguson's involvement like he knew what was going on at some point you know it's literally an impossible situation to be as big of a part of as he was mm -hmm. um, and not know something is going on and not do something about it like if you really are like that good guy like to not like do something about it even if you weren't the one pulling the strings and doing the bad things you know yeah you could have you know brought it to people's attention you know done something about it convinced guitar and letter not to do things i don't know yeah i mean i was just having a conversation with a player about how <laughs> poker isn't as fun and as of a game as it should be and it's more like just everyone using these different apps and programs to like more that's, like of course of course i mean and that's just like the way it's evolved you know it's just what's happened it's, it's kind of impossible not to do that. There's too much money involved at some point, and people finally picked up on the fact that, you know, if you can study and you can, you know, do things, you can increase your win rate and you can win more money, basically, you know? Yeah. People started treating it less like a game and something just fun to do in your time and started treating it more like, you know, a profession kind of thing. Yeah. 
Where do you see p poker going in like the next 10 years? Do you think it's gonna... I'm very curious. People have been saying poker is going to die for the last 10 years. So <laughs> I have no idea, you know? Everyone's just into Bitcoin and all this yeah. like digital B Maybe stuff. Bitcoin gives us a boom. Yeah. You know? All the high rollers are rich off of Bitcoin at least, you know? Maybe, yep. maybe, maybe they'll start <laughs> donating some money back somehow. <laughs> Give back to the poker community. Where's the upswing badge? Bro, I'm wearing... I'm wearing an upswing sweater right now. <laughs> All right, well... I wouldn't I, mind getting some food. Yeah, I think that's, um, that concludes our Facebook Live. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. If you guys do want to come back and watch it, it's going to be posted on Facebook and the YouTube page for Poker News. Uh, thank you, Tonka. And thank you, Stephen. Peter. Peter. Sorry, oh, Peter. my thank goodness. Thank you, Peter. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Peter, for joining us. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Bye. See you guys.